Hello you YouTubers out there, this is Slim Jim here and this is how I've overcome the uh, Achilles heel on, on the XR650L with the countershaft sprockets, splines wearing severely. Now I've done quite a bit of research in the past while I was uh, doing my modification here so anyway so uh, here's what I've done, I got about 12,000 miles on it with no really appreciable wear at all on the splines. Now I use exclusively the Fritzko front sprockets. These are really about the best on the market. Some people say, well, I'll use the XR650R. Well, that, they're really not that the best way to go because there's a flange here on each side. They're about two, three, two millimeters, two and a half millimeters, uh, you know, off of each face of the sprocket. And the XR650R, that's all on one side. So what it does, it, it brings your sprockets out of line and it puts more side thrust on the splines than what you would expect. So anyway, so enough of this Pritzko. I got the 14, 15, and 16. And this one here has got just about 12,000 miles on it. Uh, probably 10, actually, because I've done some uh, off-roading uh, adventure rides with the 14 and the 15, but this is still in good shape. So anyway, so what I have done, I have... Uh, popped out the uh, st standard uh, oil seal here and I put in a uh, 32 by 45 by 7 because that allows me to, this is a KTM this is a stock KTM countershaft sprocket uh, spacer collar and I use this to butt up against the uh, flange on the uh, countershaft uh, in there you know with the o-ring and everything so nothing leaks so that goes in there really nicely. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way here. And then, uh, so then you got the you got the the groove here, the the big groove on the on the counter shaft. And in order to get the proper chain line, I had to machine up, machine and grind a uh, piece of no, chromoly steel. This is 4340. Heat treated it to about oh, I don't know, probably 55 Rockwell or so. And that goes on there as well. So what happens is when I put this sprocket on, actually, uh, here's the grease I use. I, I use this. Uh, you really need some anti-seize uh, CV joint grease with high molybdenum disulfide. You really need that, and that prevents a lot of the wear and keeps the rust out. So what I'm going to do, just going to put a little bit of this on here sprocket goes on next like I said I'm, gonna tr I'm trying to do this so you can actually see what I am doing and then that's a neat way of how I got holding all this on actually I'm gonna put a little bit inside the sprocket as well let's say so you get this out of auto zone I'm putting that right inside on the splines this helps prevent a lot of wear and a lot of rust from building up good stuff anyway so like I said I've got up about 12 13 thousand miles on this thing so I now I am going to install this just like I you normally would and I'm gonna wipe a little bit of that extra grease off of there and now this face here of the sprocket is, uh, is flush with the inside face of the uh, groove where Honda uses this cheap little crappy flange here that's held on by two bolts and, and, and that doesn't even captivate the sprocket well you still got all the space at the back but what this my system does it actually holds it with pretty much zero clearance against those spacers I put back in there so I've got these little split split collars here. These are also heat treated 4130 steel and here's what they look like right there. I got the snappering groove there and everything else just fills in and then and this is goes against the counter shaft sprocket side. They're split so they go together like this and then the snappering I got a really heavy duty snappering that goes in there and that keeps everything from pulling out or lifting or rotating so I am going to do that right now like I said I want to see make sure you guys can see this and then just to make sure that those are in really well 
I am going to very gently with my snap ring or my channel lock plier just squeeze that so I've got the uh, slot at the top slot at the side I'm just going to rotate that 90 degrees and I'm going to get my uh, trusty heavy duty snap ring and snap ring pliers and I'm going to install this thing right in front of your eyes now you got to keep your fingers right there and I just want to make sure that that is in which it is and if you notice there's no movement no rocking because what these even even with the fritz go eventually after a while what happens here I'm pulling another sprocket out of my bag so what happens this is the 14 after a while the sprockets they start rocking on the splines because there's nothing backing them up where I got it against the shoulder on the counter shaft so I got pretty much zero clearance so you can see here there's no movement at all on this thing in in and out or rocking it like this and I've even taken and that's enough to hold it because I did the Arizona BDR like this because I had another way I captivated the uh, just the, just the just to keep the dirt out and that fell off so I've come up with a whole new idea and the way this works is I've got a little tiny made this out of titanium and I got a threaded bushing that's knurled on the outside and actually you held it inside the counter shaft with a JB weld and then this goes on there and I've got a couple of 3816 uh, 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 set screws on there, and they're they're it, one, they jam against each other, and I got to drop a Loctite in. This goes on there, and I got about a ten thousandths preload on this to the end of the shaft. And I just got a stainless washer. Everything fits really nice. I don't know if you can see this. Hope you can. And then I'm going to put a, another drop of blue Loctite in here oh, there we go. oops more than a drop don't need much because I got I got a thin wall I have a thin wall stainless nut lock nut anyway so what I do I put it in gear keeps it from spinning and then I put this on and here we go I'm just drawing this up and like I said there's about a ten thousandths preload this is all machined up precision precisely because I a former tool and die maker CNC programmer CAD designer CNC machinist you name it anyway so uh, I just I just use this on there just to keep it from coming loose and it doesn't like I said I've got and that's just barely over snug 